So question one, what do we have there? Question one A. Okay, so question one A, we are told that the International Audit and Assurance Standard Board has inducted a review of the structure and content of audit reports, including the issuance of an invitation to comment on improving the auditor's report, in which several suggestions were made in the, with the aim of improving the disclosures or disclosure of the matters included in the auditor's report, including those relating to going concern status. Required. Explain the suggestions made by the ISP in respect of in the, uh, additional disclosure in the auditor's report regarding the going concern status and disclose the benefits of such disclosure. Mm -hmm. So disclosures in the auditor's report relating to the going concern. Do you answer that question? Yes. Okay, so what are some of the things you said there? <laughs> I think you, you wrote some, th some good things there. What are some of the things? Talk about GRE, the company is Yes, it has to be reported on in the going concern status. Okay, what else? What else? I hope you are not finding it difficult to read your own thing. No, no, I'm taking the point. Okay, you are taking the point. So this is the GRE one. Okay, the company is extend, extending its credit. No, this is question three. Question one. Go to question one. Now, in the other one, to make sure you start every question on a fresh page. Yeah. I hope you know you have, you have to do that. Right. So, yeah, Jerry Rich, Jerry, the liquidity center of the company here, yeah, we have to consider that. What else? Uh -huh. yeah, I started by going from Sam. Okay. Liquidity status. Starting by going from Sam. Yeah. Must be in the report. Uh, some, uh, uh, as per some. As per. So let me see how you go. You went. Uh, uh, this was suggested an additional. Okay. So benefit. Okay. So he said, how the going from Sam is it good or how much management. Okay, then you spoke about the benefits. All right, all right. So the question was: Explain the suggestions made by the ABSAS in respect of the additional disclosure in the auditors regarding going concern status. So make a suggestion that it's made by them, and then discuss the benefits. So I think the benefits side you, you had no problem yes. because you said that it will help the shareholders to understand the position of the company. Yes, that is a benefit. Uh, we also said that it will help um, users of the financial statements in, in, in uh, understanding the financial statement properly. Then I think you spoke about lending also. Yes, yeah, yeah, so the bank will also know about the financing status of the company so that they can decide how much money they can lend to the company. So that's the benefit aspects that we do talk about in relation to that. What is that? <laughs> now, when it comes to the suggestion that the International Audit and Assurance Standard Board makes concerning going concern, the new auditor's report, as we'll be analyzing it in the B aspect, is that the auditor must report on what we call what? CAMP. That is the key audit what matters. Now, as part of the key audit matters, the auditor is supposed to have a paragraph on what? Going concern. So under that paragraph, the auditor would have to state the responsibility of management concerning going concern, and then the responsibility of auditors also concerning what? Going concern. Okay? So these two things must come there. Then also, the auditor must uh, Cons uh, look at their assessment of the going concern and the conclusion that they have reached on the going concern status of the company. I was right, I was right. 
I didn't know what you wrote. Because you cancelled, I didn't read. Because cancelled things are not right. I don't know. I'm telling you, it's the same thing to bring it up. Like, I wrote something about identifying the roots of maternal mistakes, and which means the implications of going on to intention. In answering this question, I'm sorry. <laughs> So the key, uh, the key Adam, yeah, key audit matters. We bring going concern. So under that paragraph or in that paragraph, we will bring what responsibility of management concerning what going concern. We are supposed to bring the responsibility of auditors concerning what going concern, and the conclusion that the auditor makes in relation to the going concern status of the company. Are you getting the idea? That is the suggestion that the ASPAS made. Uh, I'm talking ASPAS, International Auditing Insurance Standard Board. So, another going concern, we are suggesting that talk about the responsibility. Now, you know when it comes to going concern, what's the responsibility of management? Now, this is not part of the answer, but as you are writing, let's talk about it. What's the responsibility of management going, concerning going concern? That's not the answer. I will not let you finish. Yes, what's the responsibility of management concerning going concern? Rethink. Management is responsible. Hey, you want to say something? <laughs> I want to repeat the question. <laughs> what I was going to say, uh, will be a repetition of the question. Of the question. <laughs> <laughs> now, management is responsible for what? Making the various assumptions concerning the going concern status of the company. Did you say that? So, to management is responsible to make what? The various assumptions concerning the going concern status of the company. Then, we as auditors, our responsibility yeah, is to what? Assess the reasonability. I know the auditors one. Now, when I wrote it, why do you write it? So assess the reasonability of the assumptions made by all management. Then also, the auditor will himself assess the uh, going concern status of the company. So that is where, like what you said earlier, the going the liquidity status will be considered, the business risks of the company may be considered. So the auditor has a responsibility to do that. Then at the end of the day, he will conclude that okay. Uh -huh. I said that. Why are you writing it? They make assumptions concerning the going concern status of the company. This is not part of the question. No, no, it's not part of the answer. We, we are just talking about what should be recorded in the going concern. But I am extrapolating that. I'm just extending it a little bit. So, manager responsibility to make assumptions, auditor responsibility to assess the reasonability of the assumptions, and then also assess the going cost, independently assess the going cost status of the company. Then at the end of the day, they will make a conclusion. So, that's what we put there for that eight months. What should be reported in the going concern, or why then the benefits that we've already spoken about that. So that's question one. Actually, this question one should actually be at question five. Because actually question five is what talks about reporting. So but we're I, going to question five first. Why do you see reporters like Angela? So, do you know, before that I was expecting race question and so I was going to say, sure, I'm going to Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to five, I'm going to do the right shape. So I came back to town and start from one and see what is there. And I saw the reporter, I was like, ah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's it about that. That's it about that. So that's the question one, what we're supposed to do there. I love question two because this is where... We're not done. What is there? What's AME? What's AME? I've not spoken about question two. I said question one B. So the question one B, it's where we really see whether you understand audit and assurance. Yeah. Just so that 
the A answer will be put headings there like that. Which headings? Like the risk of the responsibility of management. Uh -huh. yeah. Did I have your this is not, I am writing it in that point. You can write it as a sentence. You know you have to write it as a so sentence. Can we write just the like the assumption and everything? What assumptions? So what is the answer? What was it? I'm saying yeah, that those of management. and I'm going concerned with reports in the responsibility of management, but you don't include the assumption. That, I said that is an additional thing I'm adding, which is not part of the solution. So what is the solution? I said going concern should cover this, this, this. Well, it's going concern now, number one, what? listen, number one is the responsibility of management. To make assumptions. It's part yeah. of the answer. So that's the going concern. That's the answer. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then it is the responsibility of audit, the auditor yeah. to assess the reasonability of those assumptions made by money. That's so, true. Yes, I'm then conclusive. So that is what the answer requires. Yeah. But so if you want to go further, right. if you go to want to go further, to management responsibility, you can talk about the credit worthiness of the company. The gearing does the gearing. I don't know what you are thinking. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That is why he said he used the word, it was extrapolation or something. Yeah, I was just extending that one. So, really, this is what we talk about. I get in it, our boy concern. Management responsibility, auditors' responsibilities, and then the conclusion we make as auditors on the auditors' report. So, B. You are an audit partner in Taylor & Co., a firm of chartered, chartered certified accountant responsible for the audit of Marco with a year ended 28 February 2014. The draft financial statement recognized for the year $11 million. The, the audit for the year end is nearing completion and several matters have been highlighted for your attention by the audit senior. Z. Smith. The matters have been discussed with management and will not be adjusted in the financial statement. I. In January 2014, a major customer went into administration. What does it mean? When a customer goes into administration, what does it mean? It's dead. It's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, not not dead, but going into bankrupt. Because when we say company goes into liquidate uh, into administration, it means right now all its assets is under the management of somebody who is the uh, liquidator. Okay, we already know that. I just thought that I thought you had made a mistake. How can I make a mistake? So, so, so you can't say put liquidation there. <laughs> Come and say the question for us. Seven out of Come and say it for us. There was a balance of 2.5 million owing to Marco from this customer at 30th, 28th February 2014, which is still included in trade receivables. The court case began, uh, sorry, a court case began in December 2013 involving an ex-employee who is suing Marco for unfair dismissal. Lawyers estimate that damages of $50,000 are probable to be paid. The, finance st the financial statement included a note describing the court case and quantifying the potential damages, but no adjustment has been made to include it in the statement of financial position or the statement of profit or loss. Zane Smith has produced a draft audit report for your review, an extract of which is below. Basis for opinion and discla discla disclaimer of opinion. We have performed our audit based on a materiality level of 1.5 million. Our audit procedures have proven conclusively that trade receivables are materially misstated. The finance director of Marco, Rita uh, Gilmore, has refused to make an adjustment to write off a significant trade receivable balance. Okay, okay. Therefore, in our opinion, the financial statement of Marco are materially misstated and we therefore express a disclaimer of opinion because we do not think they are fairly presented. Wow, I don't, I don't 
Okay, you didn't answer question one. No, okay, that aspect answer. of it. Oh, okay, you didn't touch that. Okay, so maybe if you had touched that with a question two, you would have gone forward. Though. <laughs> now, emphasis of matter paragraph. Now, what the, what the auditor has done, like a bumper, so we are going to assess everything there. Emphasis of matter paragraph. Marco is facing a legal claim for an amount of $50,000 from an ex employee. In our opinion, this amount should be recognized as a provision, but it's not included in the statement of financial position. We draw our attention, sorry, we draw your attention to this breach of the relevant IFRS required. Critically appraise the proposed auditor's report of Marco for the year ended 28 February 2014. Note, you are not required to redraft the extract from the auditor's report. Ah, you answered that question? Yeah, yeah. You answered because I just remember that I was marking something about Marco. Yeah. You answered that question. Answered. What, what mark did you get there from the 1B? What mark did you get? Six, okay. I like it, but you wrote nine, but I don't want to say six. Yeah, because I'm a professor. Joe, what did you get there? Four. Four? Okay. So maybe you didn't, you didn't touch on a couple of things. Now, now what is wrong with Zinc Smith's auditor's report? What is wrong with the report? What is wrong with the report? Mm -hmm. Is that? So that is the first thing. That's the first thing. So answering this question is critical because if you if you look at my solution sheet here, like my, my presentation here, I've underlined a couple of items. Now I'll, we have to talk about the heading one. Some statements he made specifically talk about them. Before we come to the emphasis of matter, so there are about close to eight or nine things that we have to talk about to award us that 12 mark question that we need to use. Now, who said what you talk about is what you are supposed to talk about? Now, so number one is the basis of opinion. Basis for opinion and what? And the opinion and the disclaimer paragraph. In the first place, as Nanaga said, they are not supposed to be put together. I think Johnny also said that. I don't know. I think he also mentioned something like that. They should not be put together. That is the first error about his what? Report. So these should not be joined together. Rather, they must be what? Separated. In the separation, the opinion comes, then the basis of opinion what? Follows. So we bring opinion first, then the basis of opinion. Now remember, we are not supposed to extract or prepare a new auditor's report. So we are just going to find out what is wrong. With his report. So number one, this is not supposed to be together. If we are writing the right thing, the opinion paragraph should be should come before the basis of opinion. That's the first line to get our first mark. The second thing about his report is the materiality he's mentioned. I don't know if Zin Zin we whatever. Zin Swing is a male or female. I don't know. <laughs> materiality level of 1.5 million dollars. What is wrong with this? The auditor is not required to mention or state the materiality level used in the audit. So that's the second thing. He is not required to state it. He's not required to state it. This is against ISA 700. ISA 700. Now what is ISA 700? That is forming an opinion and reporting on financial statements. According to ISA 700, it is not required that the materiality level be stated. 
in the auditor's report. So what she did there also, it's not that hands must be removed. Since it's not required, it must be what? Removed. Make sense? That's it. On the second slide. Now, J. Max. May I call you new? On the second thing. Can I go? Yes, please. Third, our audit procedures have proven conclusively that statement. So there is a misleading term. That thing there, proving conclusively. You know, we as auditors, we don't conclude. We give reasonable assurance and not what? Absolute assurance. But when you make a statement like proving conclusively, this is a misleading term. So this term is misleading. Which implies that all transactions have been what? Tested. But in actual sense, did we test all transactions? No. So that's a misleading statement. Hence, the wording must be changed. To what? Whatever. This one, you don't make, you don't make any uh, uh, statement about it. Because it's about wording. So this is a misleading um, statement. Which implies that the, the auditor undertook or tested all transactions. But you know that we give reasonable assurance and not absolute assurance. This is called undertaking a postmortem of the question, where you are breaking down the auditor's report and find out whatever is wrong with it. So you see why I gave you six? You see why I gave you four? What did you say you got? Four. four. So, it's about breaking the statement down. So, if you don't read it and understand that this thing is not supposed to be there, this thing is wrong, then you're in trouble. See, it means the auditor or the third one. This statement is misleading. Misleading statement. This means that the auditor uh, tested all transactions. Okay? Which is not true. So, this implies auditor audited all transactions which is not the case so separation of the basis of opinion and a disclaimer of opinion paragraph materiality which is stated is not supposed to be stated because it is against ISA severe event hence must be removed third proving conclusively this time is misleading. Hence, shouldn't be what? Made in the auditor's report. That is the thing. Because when you make that statement, it means that you have actually audited all transactions, but in reality, you did not audit all transactions. The truth of the matter is that in the exam, or you may not be able to do all of these things. But at least we have an idea like I'm showing you. That's it. That's the thing. And so they all rush it. They are ever arguing now. The next one. It's also the statement she made. Zin Smith, Krami, Nims, or Emil, or Efimi, or whatever. The statement Zin Smith made. Or see, the finance director of Marco, Rita Glamour, has refused. Now, it is unprofessional, okay, to mention it. That's it. It is all professional wording. It is all professional wording. Okay? So the auditor should refer to management or the audit report should refer to management as a whole and not single out one person. Make sense? Yes, of course. So this unprofessional wedding is what? The naming of the finance director, okay? 
naming of the finance director. That's the thing. That's the thing. So, that's the fourth thing that is happening there. Then, Oh. oh, he's a little bad. I say has refused to. That statement has refused to. We are not supposed to make that statement in our auditor's report. It sounds too author. If you can't see anything, let me know, okay? No. Alright. Okay, that statement sounds too one, unprofessional and sort of too harsh. Okay? It sounds all professional and sort of too hard. So, that statement has... That statement has refused to... It's not supposed to be made. Okay? So, it shouldn't state he has refused to make any adjustments. Shouldn't be made. So this statement should it be made. It is also an unprofessional wording. It's also an unprofessional wording. You know, wording is like wedding. <laughs> like wedding engagement. Shrub <laughs> ah, premium wedding. Woohoo! <laughs> so that's the that's the that's the fourth thing about that. Then, has refused to make an adjustment to write off a significant trade receivable balance. Listen carefully. An adjustment to write off a significant trade receivable balance. What do you mean? In the auditor's report, the amount has to be what? Included. So, that is also something. You didn't want? You didn't answer? Really? Because I saw my. Right, so they refuse to make an adjustment to write off significant trade receivable balance, the amount should be included. Okay, so the amount to be written off should be what? Included. So she, he didn't, Z Smith, Z Smith, not including that has to be what? Included. So, you see how I underlined my work. So first, I spoke about the 1.5 million. I spoke about the basis of opinion. That was the first thing. Then I spoke about modification, the 1.5. Then I came to the proving conclusion. Then I came to the unprofessional work for naming the director. Then I came to refusing to adjust. Then I'm coming to the next statement, which is writing of the significant trade receivable. That is why we are saying that the amount should have been what? Included. Does it make sense? The amount should have been included. So you are not supposed to say he refused to adjust or write off a significant trade. What do you mean by significant? Mention the amount there. That's the thing. Then, therefore, in our opinion, the financial statement of Marco are materially misstated and we are... We therefore express a disclaimer opinion. Mm -mm. How can you express a disclaimer opinion? When it means the auditor really it's vandalism. Okay? It's vandalism because he doesn't understand audit opinion because he should not, he should have uh, brought what? A qualified opinion instead. So it should have been. A qualified opinion. Okay? I think you guys use an except for. It's the same thing, meaning you are qualifying what? The opinion. Okay? You should have qualified. Not a disclaimer of opinion, as the auditor seems to have sufficient evidence. Go in your evidence, so you now see disclaimer. Now, if he does a disclaimer opinion, it is an incorrect word type of audit opinion. Okay, Jan, yeah? Jan, with the opinion paragraph, do you label the disclaimer of opinion or you just write opinion? No, you just write opinion. 
Then you bring basis of opinion. No, the new one is opinion. Oh, no. It's supposed to be just opinion paragraph. Then you will give the explanation on, on the opinion. So I'm not supposed to just bring it at a glance like that. <laughs> no, look at this auditor. Who is he? He's an audit manager. No, no, no. He's an audit senior. The person issuing this audit report, Zim, Zim Smith, no? He's an audit senior. And this is the kind of auditor's report that he is issuing. So, the disclaimer opinion, it should have been what? It should have been uh, a qualified opinion. It is an incorrect type of opinion, meaning that this disclaimer opinion is an incorrect type of opinion. 12 marks, what you want to in the salon? 12 marks. Now, as I was saying, you may not be able to get a time to think through like this, but at least you should be able to list a number of items. You should be able to list a number of items. The emphasis of matter paragraph, EOM, that he included there in relation to the court case is inappropriate. Because the figure is not in the financial statement. That is it. Because, um, and even it is below the threshold of the liquidity, uh, of the materiality. So anytime the thing is below the threshold, uh, it's not supposed to be also reported on it. And then, doesn't also relate to uh, the financial statement outstanding. No, it may relate because it depends. See, the emphasis of matter paragraph comes when you bring something that when it's, uh, there is something in the financial statement you are making an emphasis on. But this one was not there. The people did not bring it at all. So what are you making an emphasis on? Emphasis, yes. So, EOM concerning the court case in regards to the court case. is inappropriate and the amount is also below the threshold of the materiality level set for the audit. There you go. 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 Then the last thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so the last thing, nine. You see the final statement he made there? He said, we draw out your attention to this breach of the relevant IFRS. Relevant IFRS is saying the IFRS should be referred to. Okay? So the IFRS in question should be referred to. <laughs> and yeah, we are all this and say the IFRS should be referred to. Is that? No, IFRS, the, the appropriate IFRS should be referred to. Even this thing is about court case, which is IAS 37, right? Provisions. It is, or see, breach, no, or cutting. That means IFRS not only by a international financial reporting standard, because nothing has replaced that one, as far as we're concerned. So these are the things you are supposed to talk about for the 12 months. For the 12 months. It is, that's it. If you realize we are not writing much, but we are just highlighting on what he has mentioned and how it should have been and what is wrong with it. That's the thing. Very simple, sweet, straight to the point. Simple, sweet, straight to the point. That is all. That is all. We're done. We're done. Send a minute say like
things has come, so you are right. <laughs> So that's it. So, in case you go to the exam hall and an extract auditor's report is given, then the auditor says, appraise the auditor's report. Take your time, read the wording, the phrases made, and then find out what is wrong with it. List as much as your eyes can see and your brains can recollect. And then you go for it. So don't talk much. Don't say something that is not inside. Just go straight to the point, that's all. So 12 months. So if you got six, it means that, yeah, probably you did much. You shouldn't have had a six because you spoke about this. You spoke about this. You didn't talk about the you didn't talk about this. You didn't talk about the unprofessional thing. You didn't talk about the refusing thing. You didn't talk about the amount being concluded. You spoke about this. Then you spoke about this. So that is one, two, the opinion three. That is no, it's not three, but my <laughs> That is three over nine. So you should have had you should have had three points. No, you should have six months and you should have ten. Talking about the thing should be qualified. I'm done with you. The last, the last question. Talking about the qualified. Talking about the ever so much about. John, I, I'm thinking you answered this question because I think I saw Marco somewhere <laughs> to see you are yourself. <laughs> so, you see, <laughs> so now you can imagine what I was going through. I don't know. So that's our question one. Let's come to question two. Question two. I think John didn't answer that one. So let's come to question two. The requirement, question 2A, comment on the matters to be considered and explain the audit evidence you should expect to find during your review of the audit working paper in respect of the issues described above. So we should comment on the matters we are going to be considering and then the evidence. Two things. Two things. So, if in every scenario there, the I, you're going to look at the matters to consider. And then you will ask yourself, what are the evidence that I'm going to be looking for? Does it make sense? So two things. It has to be separated like this for you to get a marks. Now, let's go. You are an audit manager in Rose & Co. Responsible for the audit of Copa Co. You are reviewing the audit working papers relating to the financial year 31st January 2014. Copaco is a manufacturer of chemicals used in the agricultural, agricultural industry. Sorry, The draft financial statement recognized profit for the year to 31st January 2014 to be what? 15 million. So you can see that I underline my own. Then comparatively to the previous year, <coughs> it is 20 million. Total assets for the current year is 240 million. Comparative to the previous year, it is 280, 230 million. The audit senior, Max Tenner, has brought several matters to your attention. Ah, copper coal factories are recognized within property plant and equipment at a carry value of 60 million. Half of the factories produce a chemical which is used in the which is used in farm animal feed. Recently, the government has introduced a regulation stipulating that the chemical is phased out over the next three years. Sales of the chemical are still buoyant. However, the, however, however, and are projected to account for 45% of copper's revenue for the year ending 31st January 2015. Copper Co. has started a to research a replacement chemical which is allowed under the new regulation and has spent $1 million on a visibility study into the development of this chemical. Eight marks. Matters to consider other evidence. So let's come to the matters to consider. If we look at this question carefully, 
we need to ask ourselves what is the matters that we need to consider about it. The first thing we need to consider is to, since this is about property, plant, and equipment, we need to ask ourselves what is the materiality, okay, of the property, plant, and equipment to the statement of statement of profit or loss. How do we get that? That would be 60 million mm -hmm, over the total asset of what? 240 million. Makes sense. And that's how many percent? Twenty-five percent. So it's 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 quite material. Then we are told that half of the factories is going to phase out by the new regulation by the government. So it is not the whole property plant and equipment. So the half, which is because how to phase out due to the the new regulations will be what? 12.5%. Make sense? 12.5% because half of the 25%. So 12.5%. So that's a matter we need to consider. Then also we are told that as part of the company trying to replace this, they have researched a replacement and they have Incur a cost of how much? One million dollars. And we are told that, okay, under this, and has been spent one million on visibility into the development of this project. So the question is, what do you think could go wrong about this research? Now, for this research course, according to IAS 38, sorry, yeah, IS 38 intangible assets. What does it state? All research expenses must be what? Written, written off. Okay? All research I wrote all that. expenses should be written off. When you use the words written off, it's not nice, but must be treated as what? Expenses. As we treat our expenses. So that is something that we need to consider. So not capitalized. So it is likely that the company had what? Capitalized the